In the previous video, we learned about nested routes. We created a block folder within the pages folder and within the block folder, we created first.js and second.js which map to slash blog slash first and slash blog slash second. Now this is fine at the moment, but defining routes by using predefined paths is not always enough for complex applications. Which brings us to scenario four. For scenario four, the assumption is that we are building a product listing and detail page. If a user navigates to slash product, we should display a list of three products. However, in addition to this, if the user navigates to slash product followed by the ID of that product, we need to display details about that individual product. For example, if the user navigates to slash product slash one, we should display details about the first product. Similarly, if the user navigates to slash product slash two, we need to display details about the second product and slash product slash three, we need to display details about the third product. Let's understand how to achieve this in Next.js. I'm going to create a new folder within the pages folder. This is going to be product. Within the folder, create a new file called index.js. Within the file, let's export a component that displays a list of three products. Now this is nothing new, so I'm going to copy paste a React component. So function product list, which returns product one, two, three, and we export product list as the default export. If you now head back to the browser and type in localhost 3000 slash product, we see the list of products as expected. So the first part of our scenario four is complete. Now, from what we have learned about nested routes, we know that the second part of this particular scenario can be implemented by creating three separate files within the product folder. So one.js, two.js, and 3.js. This would work, but if we had 100 products, we would need to create 100 pages, which is most definitely not the right solution. The correct solution is to use dynamic route segments. For our scenario, the product ID, which can be one, two, three, and so on, should be a dynamic value that maps to a particular file in the pages folder. And in Next.js, you can add brackets to a page file name to create a dynamic route. Let's go back to VS Code and understand what I mean by that. In the product folder, let's first get rid of the individual product ID files. Instead, we are going to create a new file. This file name though is special. Within a pair of square brackets, I'm going to specify product ID and the extension remains .js. You could name it just id.js, but product ID makes sense given the context. Now within this file, I'm going to define and export a component. So function product detail and we return an h1 tag that says details about product and we export default product detail. If I now save the file, head back to the browser and navigate to slash product slash one, we see the product details page. The same holds good for slash product slash two and slash product slash three. Of course, even slash product slash 100. 
Now this is possible because Next.js treats square brackets in a file name as a dynamic segment to create a dynamic route. So we have successfully created a dynamic route, but our component JSX needs to be improved. At the moment, we just display the text details about product, irrespective of what the product is. In a typical application, you would want to extract the product ID and do something with that ID. Perhaps make an API call to fetch the product details. Of course, for our scenario, let's keep it simple and just display the product ID in the browser. Now to extract the route parameter, which is product ID, we need to import a hook from the next package. So in the product ID file, import use router from next slash router. Within the function body, we call this use router hook. The hook returns a router object. From this router object, we access the query parameters object. So router dot query. The parameter we want to access is product ID. So dot product ID. Let's store this in a constant. Now it is important to note here that product ID on the query object corresponds to the dynamic segment we have specified for the file name. If this was just ID, you would have to code router.query.id. And once we have the product ID, we can render it as part of the JSX. So details about product, product ID. If we now save the file and head back to the browser, you can see the URL is slash product slash 100 and the JSX is details about product 100. Now we get to product slash one, and we get details about product one. So scenario number four has been successfully implemented. Now there is one point that I would like you to make note of. The product ID can be any string and not just a number. So I could type product slash sweater and it would render the same page. Now it might so happen that apart from this dynamic route, we would also need a fixed path. So in the product folder, I'm going to create a file called sweater.js. Within the file, I'm going to define and export a simple component. So function sweater, and we return an h1 tag landing page for sweaters. We also default export the component. Now my question to you is, if we navigate to slash product slash sweater, will the product ID page render? or the sweater page render. Let's head to the browser and find out. Let's refresh the page. And you can see that the JSX from the sweater component is rendered. So this is something I want you to keep in mind. Even though we have dynamic route where the ID could be anything, including sweater, Next.js is smart enough to first match the route with a page that is more specific. So if you navigate to slash product slash sweater, Next.js will first try to find a sweater.js page. Only if that is not found, will it render the dynamic product ID page. All right, let me quickly summarize what we have done. We first created a file with a special file name. The file name consists of a pair of square brackets and an ID within the brackets. This lets Next.js map any route with the URL slash product slash product ID. Within the exported component, we use the use router hook exported by the next router package to access the product ID route parameter. We then render the product ID as part of the JSX. Also, Next.js will always try to match the route path with a file name in the pages folder, nested or not, before trying to match a dynamic route. 
Now, dynamic routes is useful when implementing the list detail pattern in any UI application. Hopefully, you now know how to do that with Next.js. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next video.